The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly snapping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of some gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, I tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, I distinctly remember, it was the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought a ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished, in the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from the books of surcrease of sorrow, sorrow for lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain, rustling of each purple curtain, thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis the visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door." Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, I said, or madame, truly your forgiveness I implore. But is the, the, but the fact is I am napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door. That I scarce was I sure to have heard you. Here I opened the wide door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into the darkness, peering long, I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming, dreams of no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, an echo murmured back, the word Lenore, merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul with me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, somewhere louder than before. Surely, I said, surely that this is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what threat it is in a mystery, mystery I explore. Let my heart still be a moment in this mystery explore. The wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when the many flirt and flutter, in step the stake the raven, the saintly saint of years yore. Not in the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but within mien of Lord Lady, perched above my chamber floor, perched upon the bust of Tylus, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiled, sad faced into smiling, by the grave stern decorum of the consonants it wore, through thy crest be shone and shaven thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim, the ancient raven wandering from nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is, night's pro plutonian shore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Much as I marvel this ungainly fowl, to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning of little reverency bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing a bird above its chamber door, bird or beast upon its sculpted bust above its chamber door, with such his name as nevermore. But the raven still sitting lonely on the placid bus spoke only that one word of his soul was one word he did outpour, nothing farther farther than he uttered, not feathered than he fluttered, till I scarcely mourned than muttered, other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me am I, as my hopes have flown before, the bird said, nevermore. Startled, as stillness broke in my reply, so aptly spoken, doubtless, I said, what utters it only to stock and store, caught from some unhappy master on a merciful disaster, followed fast and followed faster till his Songs once burdened bore, till the dirges of hope and melancholy burden it bore, of never, never more. 
But the ravens still beguiling all my fancy into spining. Straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of the bird and bust the door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself into linking. Fancy unto fancy, thinking that this ominous bird of yore, what is this grim, ungainly, ghastly gaunt, an ominous bird of yore, meant by croaking, nevermore. This I sat engaging, guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned in my bosom's core. This upon more I sat divining, with my head at ease, reclining on the cushion, its velvet's lining, that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet, o velvet lining, with lamplight o gloating o'er. She shall pass, ah, nevermore. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by Steph Seraphim, whose footfalls linked on the turf, tough floor. Wretched, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, these angels had sent thee, respite, respite, and neopithe, from the memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind neopithe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, I said, thing of evil, prophet still, a bird or devil, whether temper sent or whether tempest tossed, there thee here ashore, desolate all ye undaunted on this desert land enchanted, on this home of horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there, balm in Gilead, tell me, tell me, I implore, quote the raven, nevermore. Prophet, I said, thing of evil, prophet still, a bird of devil, by the heaven that bends above us, that by God we are both adored. Tell this soul of sorrow laden if, within distant Adian, I shall clasp a sainted maiden whose angel's name Lenore. Clasped a rare, a radiant maiden of the angel's name Lenore. Quote the raven, nevermore. Be that word of sign of parting, bird of fiend, I shrieked up starting. Get thee back into the tempest of the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as token to lie the soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit bust above my door. Take my beak from the heart and take from my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still sitting, still sitting on the pallid boss of Pallas, just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all yet seeming a demon that is dreaming, and lamp a light, and hear him streaming, throws his shadow upon the floor, and so shall lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. <laughs>